So let's move to question number 19. How can we deploy a simple web part in SharePoint? In the previous sessions, we had discussed uh, about web part. We have seen that how web part helps us to achieve uh, personalization and customization. Now what we'll do is that uh, in this session, we will deploy a simple web part, a simple label web part uh, on a SharePoint page and see that uh, what are the various steps involved to do the same. So definitely the first step is to create the web part. And as we had previously mentioned, that web part is nothing but it's a simple class. So what I've done is that I have made a simple class called a simple label web part. And we had also discussed in the previous session that it needs to be inheriting from the web part class, which belongs to the system.web.ui.webcontrols.webpart namespace. So here's my simple class, simple label web part, inheriting from web part. And, and I have imported the necessary namespaces in the class, right? Now, uh, as I said that this web part will be a simple label, so I need to add the label object to the uh, web part controls. So what I've done is that I have overrided the create child controls method. Now basically create child controls method fires when the web part is initialized, or I'll say when the web part uh, runs as an object, when the web part object is created, I'm sorry. So what I've done is that I have created the label object. I have set some text here saying that, hey, this is a label and uh, I have added the label to the controls collection and I've compiled, I'll compile this DLL and it says me build succeeded. Great. So now that my class is created, I've compiled it, the DLL is done. So the second step, what we need to do now is basically to add this class in the save control tag of the web config file. So that's our second step, what we need to do. We need to go to the web config file and add safe entry tag. So here's my web config file. My project currently or my website currently is hosted on CINET pub www root WSS virtual directories 80. You need to find out that where exactly you are hosting your SharePoint site and then edit the same config file of the virtual directory, right? Now safe control says that, okay, it's safe to run this control in the SharePoint runtime. So basically I've added a safe control tag here. I've added an assembly uh, name of the of my web part. So at this moment it is class library web part dot CS and I have added the namespace which is the same as the assembly name. That's my namespace name class library web part and same you can see here and I also have added my class name. So that's that's what we need to do. We need to add the web web dot con we need to add the safe control entry in the web config file. So that's our second step. So moving to step number three, we need to copy the DLL in the virtual directory of the bin folder. So basically at this moment, our virtual directory is 80, virtual uh, C I N E T pub W root W S S virtual directory 80 slash bin. And I've copied the DLL class library web part dot DLL in that directory. The fourth step is we need to go to the web part gallery and populate the gallery. Okay. So now that we have made a, uh, made an entry uh, into the, uh, web config file. We have copied the DLL in the virtual directory. Now it's time to take the web part DLL or take the web part inside our SharePoint page. So let's go to a site. Click on site settings. Click on web parts. Click on new. And you can see that your web part is displayed here in the gallery. Now what you need to do is you need to select and say populate the gallery. With this action, what happens is basically this web part gets included in your web part gallery. Now you can see that there are some web parts over here, which have been already been included. And these are SharePoint web parts. And here's our web part, simple web part dot web part. So this is simple label web part dot web part. Now this is our web part basically, which the custom web part which we are imported in the web part, uh, in the in the web part gallery right and the final step we need to add the web part to the sharepoint site pages so what i'll do is that i'll add this web part to my home page itself click on site setting click on edit page click on add web part and you can see your web part here simple label web part select it add it you can see that your web part is added here. Now you can edit this web part. At this moment, you are in the edit mode of the page. Remember that. So you can see that your web part is 
uh, all edit you can see this uh, you can see that your your web part is open in a edit mode so click on edit click on modify shared web part and what we'll do is that we'll just to understand that how this works we will just change the height of the web part so let me say that i'll put some some figure here just to show you that how basically the height will change so you can see that the height has changed and i'm done with it now when i see this web part in the view mode so i'll go to the home page and you can see that this web part is at this moment uh, displayed on your home page so just by a click of a button it has been added here let's do something customization because the previous customization of height did not work because there's nothing to see here so what I'll do is I'll just change the name of the web part the label of the web part so let me change that change this as this is part. okay and say apply now I've done no coding for uh, this admin screen and it has just been it, it just comes as a part of the web part engine now you can see that just by click of the button just by it has changed this to this web part the text has been changed the label of the web part is changed so in other words we are able to customize this label definitely we can do much more than that because we have not added any custom property in the web part we have just taken whatever default properties given by web part so in the coming session, we will see that how we can add custom properties and see that how uh, we can change the behavior of the web part and give more control to the more control to the user to do customization and uh, personalization. So I hope that uh, you are uh, comfortable with how to deploy web part. Basically, just the point to remember is that you need to remember these five steps. Create the web part. That's what we had done. Inherit from the web part class, import the namespaces, copy the web, uh, go to the web config file and make a safe entry. So that's what we have done as a second step. Copy the DLL in the virtual directory. Right. Go to the web part gallery and populate it. So site action, site settings web parts at this moment it is present in our gallery but in case it was not you need to go to new check that web part and populate the gallery right and finally add the web part to the SharePoint pages so that's what we had done by editing the page we clicked on site action we clicked on edit page and we added the web part to our page now the power here what we have given to the user is that we have made a reusable component but it is left complete to the user that how he wants to add in which page he wants to add and how he wants to go about displaying it and that is the basic uh, strong uh, feature of web parts it helps you to customize and personalize reusable functionality you know with very minimum coding because if you were supposed to do this from scratch using ASCX or ASPX or anything it will take hell lot of time but here because of the reusable framework of web parts it becomes very easy to uh, give customization and personalization feature to the user uh, in a very easy fashion